A lot has happened in 24 hours. We leave and all hell breaks loose. The Jets uh, trade Sam Darnold to uh, Carolina. I'm happy for Sam. I really am happy for Sam. Uh, I think it's a good place to go to. He reunites with Robbie Anderson and also Joe Brady is their offense coordinator. Remember, he was the offense coordinator for Joe Burrow at LSU. He uh, came from the Saints. He had a lot of success with Joe Burrow. And I, I bet you... You know, they weren't thinking Sam Darnold at the beginning of all this, but when everything started to flesh itself out and or flush itself out, I should say, um, then all of a sudden you see now, OK, this is what we have and this is the opportunities we have. We might as well see if we can get something out of Sam and resuscitate his career, much like I think what Frank Reich is going to try to do with Carson Wentz in Indianapolis. So I'm really I mean, I am um, overjoyed for Sam because because there's nothing worse than sitting around for three months listening to how the Jets want to replace you and then have to answer questions about that. And we all knew that it was eventually it was going to happen. Yeah. Just a matter of uh, when it was going to happen. And the Joe Douglas reconfiguring of this roster now continues. They add three draft picks, two more to next year's haul, one for this year's haul. Uh, uh, and I just think that he is doing like a, an amazing job now getting all of these picks and reconstructing this franchise. Now it comes down to making the right picks and believing in the picks that you're going to make. And I do believe that they, uh, you know, they have fallen in, they have fallen in love with Zach Wilson. They, they are totally cemented and believe that he's their guy. This is what this tells us now again. And it's just another step in the process of getting to the draft. And, uh, you know, if I'm a Jet fan. I, there's two things that I like. One is the stability now, finally, at the top of the uh, organization, and everybody understands what their role is and who's running things. And number two, I believe behind the scenes there's probably a great collaboration going on between Rob Sala and and uh, oh, you're, and, no, and you're turning Douglas. into one of those guys. I do. You but, turn uh, into a collaboration it's, it's, guy. Yeah, but here it is. It's a happy place right now. It is. Everything's a happy place right now, and it's a new start. It's a fresh start. I know Jets, you know, want, Jet fans want to win now. But I'm telling you that everything that you could have hoped that Joe Douglas could have done under the circumstances in which he was hired, he has done and hit the ball out of the park. Yeah. Now, I don't think that there are few people on this earth that could say that they're more well-versed in Jets fans than you. I think that there's... <laughs> well, yeah, I have a very intimate knowledge of You that, do. Yes. you got the intimate knowledge of yes. the Jets fan. You could write an entire book by yourself in one day on the mentality of a Jets fan. Now... The reason I bring this up is I want to know from your expert analysis yeah, and yeah. opinion on the Jet fan, how many Jets fans, when this trade happened, thought, okay, Zach Wilson, great, he's going to be our guy. And how many of them, from a percentage standpoint, said, Matt Rule was the coach that I wanted. He's now in down in Carolina. The Jets screwed that up because it wouldn't let him hire his staff. Sam Darnold was potentially the best quarterback of that draft. The Jets screwed him up. You know what's going to happen. Those two guys are going to meet up in Carolina. They're going to be great together. They may even go win a championship. We're going to be sitting here spinning our wheels with some quarterback from BYU who was an out-of-nowhere guy. How many Jet yeah. fans were saying that when I, this trade I, went I, down? I think if uh, the Jet fans in my life that I know are all excited about Rob Sala. They were, everybody was jacked about the hiring of the coach. And I think that's the first thing that has to make the, the fan happy. We got to get the right coach in here, the right personality. He has to reflect who we are as a fan base. And I think you got that guy. I think you got a high energy guy. You got a guy that's got a great track record. And so I think all Jet fans are really happy about that. I think they're split on the quarterback thing. I think some people probably wanted to keep Sam here and see if it was going to work in Mike LaFleur's offense. And I also believe that some Jet fans don't believe that Sam was very good and couldn't stay on the field. And whether he got hurt or he got sick or he saw ghosts, uh, that they were tired. And, you know, they saw enough uh, games on, on, you know, in real time. And I think he played like 36 or 38 games. Um, I think they felt like, you know, it's time to move on. And I look, I understand that this is the first time what's of some team in the in the Super Bowl era or the draft or whatever, whatever this is, that a team is going to select a quarterback in the first top three picks uh, four, yard, four years apart. That's well, because everybody's just obsessed with it now. Yeah, having but, but the point Because of the gotta, salary cap situation. True. So now they're going to reset their salary cap again with the quarterback situation here. I think uh, down in Carolina, they'll probably pick up Sam's fifth-year option, which is good for him. Um, I, I don't think this is uh, – 
like there's any animosity here. I, th- I just think it's more pride that is associated with one person, and that's the quarterback that's being sent to another team. Yeah, no, I understand. I just wonder, you know, back when the first, second, third, fourth round picks would get an exorbitant amount of money before playing a single game. You know, one of the guys that always pops into my mind is Sam Bradford. You know, the money that Sam Bradford made as a rookie. So, a lot same of these guys. With, same with uh, Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford. He was one of the last ones, True. I believe. Yes. So would these teams be as cavalier in selecting these quarterbacks? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. I, See, I that's I, the thing that scares but, me but because it still why, means so much to the franchise. I know, but, know? This, but this is why I felt like one of the smart things that the NFLPA did agree to was a rookie wage scale. So that teams that found themselves like in the Jets situation – you could just keep taking shots at goal at the most important position. And that's what I think this is. You just, and you have another general manager, and Sam wasn't picked by this previous, by Joe Douglas. So he was picked by Michael McCaffin. And most general managers, when they come in and they finally have the control that they need and that they desire, they're going to start putting their stamp on this team. And you know, the other thing too about Joe Douglas, he is a completely low key guy. He is low-key. He's out of the media. He's not making declarative statements. He's very careful in what he says. And he's an offensive lineman, man. Yeah. He's very, I'm telling you. I love his personality. We both do. I just, yes. I, the thing that scares me, though, is the number two overall pick, a shot on goal type of situation. Yeah, but didn't I tell you that? That's an em- that has to if, be an empty netter, if, man. If you, were, if, you were a, if you were a general manager, yeah. you couldn't ask for a better situation and Joe Douglas has been in the last two years. I now, know, it's, it's but that's different than what I'm saying. It's though. been a pain in the ass. He's had to get there. It's been a pain in the ass to get to this point. But getting to this point and may, making some of the tough decisions that he has made um, had really turned out to be a godsend for this franchise and restarting the franchise with a whole new uh, coaching staff and a, and, a, and a general manager that's totally in charge. So I'm... Hey, look, I, so you're sold that he's doing the right thing. Yeah, I am sold totally that he's doing the right thing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, but now and now it comes down to replenishing the players. He's got to get players, and the only way you can do that, and without having to uh, compete on the open market for those players, is by drafting players. And the more draft picks you have, the better chances you have. Could of have had more if you kept Sam and traded back. That's true, but then he wouldn't have had a quarterback. Well, he could have. I mean, he. I mean, like once I. I I do believe that there were there was consideration for Deshaun Watson. I do believe that, and there may be even been a little consideration for Russell Wilson. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, but Russell did want to come here, so that was the other thing. Right, he wasn't on but, the list of teams. But once Deshaun Watson got embroiled in all of this stuff going on down in Houston, which gets uglier and uglier by the day, there was no way that they were going to go that way. So this is this is. Remember, we were talking. I think it was. Right after the season was over, and we were talking about Joe Douglas and the decisions that he was going to have to make. One, to find a coach. And then when we get to the draft, it was going to be, what are we doing with the number two pick? And what are we doing at quarterback? And there were all these different decisions he had to make. And now we finally have arrived at the final decision for at least the quarterback and the number two pick. That he has decided that he has seen enough of either Zach Wilson or Justin Fields that they are going to be the quarterback of the future. The only thing I worry about is if one of these kids, I don't want one of these kids to have to go through exactly what Sam Darnold had to go through, that they're not mentally ready to handle this yet. Well, whatever guy gets drafted is starting. We know that. It feels that way. Which well, it I, has I, to be. Like, or The only other scenario would be that this guy bombs out, and we know it's Zach Wilson. Like, who, what are we even talking about? If Zach Wilson bombs out in a preseason and in training camp, and he's a total – zero and then whatever veteran backup that they bring in because they're, they're going to have to do that i don't even know who's available right now maybe in that market but they're going to have to do that alex smith could be available um you know uh now Gardner, would you would Gardner you think Gardner about that i would would I you would. think about bringing in a veteran and, I, I and would, having them start I, a couple games I, you know I, i'm i'm not all about throwing these kids out there and again every situation is different so what happened in la last year tyrod taylor started he got hurt Justin Herbert went in there. They saw, oh, my God, he's ready to go, and he looks like he can handle it. Let's play him. No, that wasn't the case. What in week of the year was that? Was that it was like week two or week three. Yeah, it wasn't week one, Now, though, remember, right? this year they will have preseason games. Yeah. Last year they didn't have preseason games. Cincinnati went right with Joe Burrow. But then again, Joe Burrow was, an, um, you know, he played at Ohio State or was at Ohio State, then went to LSU, 
So he was a little bit more mature when he came out and he was ready to go too. You just never know when these kids are ready. That's all. I mean, I believe Patrick Mahomes would have been ready his first year, but they had Alex Smith there. They had success with Alex, and they didn't want to push Patrick Mahomes. And they saw what he was doing in practice every week. They just didn't. They weren't sure whether or not he was going to be able to take it uh, to the to the to the field. So I I personally think where the Jets are right now, starting over at you know baseline. You have the coach that you want, and now you have one of the quarterbacks that you're going to want, and you're going to have a hundred other picks. And the quarterback has swag, Boomer. He's got swag. Uh, I hope he does it. I hope self-proclaimed he swag. You know what? I really hope. I, I hope that he has determination that he wants to be an NFL quarterback and understands that swag doesn't just win on the football field. You got to really apply yourself to the position. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.